So look, I've made over $10 million dropshipping products online in the last few years, and I'm still doing millions every single year with the exact same business model. And what I'm gonna do in this video is just basically give away the entire blueprint. So you can literally just copy and paste what I'm about to show you into your business, and hopefully you can get the same results. So with that out of the way, make sure of course you subscribe if you like money. Let's hop into the computer and let's jump into it. So of course, any claim online that is made should be backed up with a proof. So I'm just gonna show you a few stores, right? Just to back up the claims that I'm, that I'm making. So you can see here that this store has actually done close to $10 million on this one single store. And these are just some stores that I actually still have access to. There's quite a few that I actually closed down, but I'll show you these ones that we have access to. So I'll do a quick refresh so you can see on this one here. And let me show you another one. So here's another one that done close to a mil in a short period of time. It was a trending product. So let's just do a refresh on this one here. There you can see numbers stayed exactly the same. And let's jump into the final one. So here's a recent one because I know there's gonna be people, oh, those are old numbers and whatever. So let's just refresh on this one so you can see. See, this one's done a million today and is averaging around about 200 to 300k every single month. So I'm going to be breaking down absolutely everything from the store to how and where to find winning products, how to build a high converting product page, how to increase your average order value via upsells and downsells, how to then do the marketing, which platform you should use, how to test and how to scale, and then the back end side of things so that everything is running smoothly and how you can build a team. So make sure you get a notepad. Like I mentioned, we've got quite a lot to actually get through, but I can guarantee that this will be one of the most valuable videos that you will watch today. So let's just jump straight into it. And we're gonna start first and foremost with the Shopify store, okay? So the actual platform that you're gonna be running where your website is going to be hosted on is going to be called Shopify. It's the best platform that's out there. I don't get ultimately paid to say this, but in terms of, Shopify, WooCommerce and Wix and other platforms that are out there, Shopify is the easiest and best platform to use. So I recommend you use that. Now you're gonna be using and creating what's called a concept store. It's not a one product store. It's not a niche store. It's not a general store, which used to work back in 2017. Basically, when you look at the product pages a little later in this video, we basically build out a concept store to prove validity of a product. It gives us the flexibility to test multiple different products while still locking on brand. And that will be made, be made a little bit more clearer as we go through the video. So in order, first and foremost, you need to come up with a brand name. Now there's two free websites that I like to use for this. The first one is called NameQL. And with this website, you can basically just type in a root keyword, which can be basically anything. And what it's gonna do is it's gonna throw up suggestions that you can ultimately use for your domain name. And this actually, I believe it checks the .com is available or not available to register which means it very easily gives you a visual on if you can register the domain, if it's available or not. And you can play around with these keywords. Another one is Namelix. Now Namelix is another one, but it also gives you ideas for your logo, which is also good to give you inspiration. One thing I will say at this point is you don't want to overcomplicate your name. And personally with the concept store strategy that we personally use, you want something which sounds brandable and catchy, but means absolutely nothing. If you look at a lot of big brands out there, their names are brandable and catchy. For example, Nike, Balenciaga, Bose, like Apple, they all mean absolutely nothing on the surface of things, but they all brandable could be applied to any single product. Now, moving on, when it comes to themes, a lot of people always ask me, you know, do you need a paid theme? Is a paid theme better? But to be honest, I've run up multiple millions on just a free Sense theme with a little bit of custom coding here and there. But Sense, if you're getting up and running, the Sense theme is one that is hosted by Shopify. So they've actually built it themselves. It's very responsive, very fast, and has some customizability with it. And you can make it look very, very professional by using the Sense theme. So we always recommend that one if you are just getting started out. Another option in terms of the paid route, again, I don't recommend that you go down this route to start off with. You always wanna save your money and that money is best spent on ad spend. But Shrine is another one that is used. I mean, it's being used by a lot of stores. So eventually, you know, the, the, the sophistication levels of the consumer will start to realize and pattern recognize that all of these stores are kind of looking the same. I'm not sure of the price of the Shrine theme, but if you're just starting out, it's best to go with the Sense theme, to be honest. 
Now the next ultimately you need to come up with a logo. Again, you don't need to overthink this. In terms of softwares that you can use to create your logo, it depends on your ability, uh, your creative abilities uh, on which platform that you use. There's Canva of course, which is 100% free and has templates and text involved. There is Photoshop, which is my personal favorite. I'm not a Photoshop wizard, but I am proficient to be able to create a logo at least. And then there's Photop or Photopia, depending on how you want to say it. And this is basically a carbon copy of Photoshop, but it's an online version of Photoshop. So if you want to use Photoshop and you don't want to pay for it, you know, then you can just use Photop. Below here are some examples of logos. These are all brands that are running it up. And I think but at least these two, I think, are drop shipping. Bleem's pretty much, pretty much more of a brand. But you can see how easy these logos are and very simplistic. You don't want to overcomplicate it. It's very much just a text type font. Find a font that you like the look of. You can go onto the font to find some sort of fonts that you like the look of. And then you can literally just create the logo with the, whatever the name of your store that you've came up with. If you want to add on an icon like these guys have, Cairo Labs, then you can come up with that as well. Another thing is relating to the name also, you know, you can see that Bleem or Bleemy, depending on how you want to pronounce it, Cairo Labs and Ace Men, they mean absolutely nothing. And they can be applied to pretty much any single product, right? Now, moving on when it comes down to the apps that you should use. Now, there's about 8,000 plus different apps on the Shopify store. A lot of them were a massive waste of time. There are some here that are a little bit, that, that are missing, that you could, not missing, but you could interchange with depending on your level of skills, right? And we'll talk about those, especially this one here. There's some of the fulfillment ones. We'll talk about that a little later in the video. But these ones are very safe to use. I've used these and these apps will either make you more money or save you time. The majority of these will obviously make you more money. So there's Vitals, Kaching Bundles, DSs, which is fulfillment. So I'll probably talk through these. So Vitals has things such as product reviews and it's about 30 different apps all in one. Kaching Bundles is a way to increase your average order value by designing different bundles on your product page. DSs is one which is fulfillment. After sale is for increasing your average order value, which again, I'm gonna go through a powerful strategy that you can use in this video when we talk about how to increase your average order value using apps like Aftersell. I'm going to, basically going to give you a strategy that you can use that will almost make you extra money overnight if you implement it correctly. And then finally, we have Clavio. And Clavio is basically, I probably, pronounced, I probably spelled that wrong, but Clavio is a email marketing software. And you can if you do it correctly, like Abandoned Cart and Welcome Series and Winback Series and all these kind of things, you can very much add in an additional 20% more revenue for your stores. Now, in terms of payments, okay, this very much depends on the country that you are targeting. There are some different ones that you may want to add on these depending on the country that you are targeting. But for the most part, especially if you are targeting the top four countries, Shopify payments is going to be the one that you're going to try and get first because... The fees, when you're using Shopify, they obviously push you to use Shopify payments because of the cheaper fees. And PayPal is obviously, it's just, I absolutely hate PayPal. I can't stand it. It does my head in. But unfortunately, the monopoly that they have on the people out there, it's just one of those things that you have to have on your store in order to increase your conversion rate. And again, it's very dependent upon the country that you target. So to give you a live example, people in Germany, you can't really run without PayPal. They 80%, 80 to 90% prefer to use PayPal. Whereas in, you know, let's say United Kingdom or, you know, Australia or United States, it may be 50-50 split between card and PayPal. Now, some other ones which are missing on here, which again, I'm not going to go into, but Klarna, if you were targeting to Sweden, there's Bank Contact and Ideal if you were targeting like Belgium and Netherlands. So with that out of the way, we've kind of already gone through the store side of things. Next, we're going to move on to the product, which is one of the things where a lot of people kind of, especially newbies, they, they fail at this part. They, they can't seem to find winning products. And you've probably heard of the term winning products at some point in your dropshipping journey. And I'm going to break it down as best as I possibly can on, you know, the different methods and the preferred methods that I personally like to use in order to find these and consistently find six and seven figure winning products that make money. Okay. 
So first and foremost, the criteria. Now, there's a, a very strict criteria that I like to go off because without a criteria, what happens is you just end up throwing shit at the wall. And if you are throwing shit at the wall, you will very much lose money. It just burns a hole in your pocket. Whereas if you have a framework or a criteria that you run potential products through, you will be eliminating products and testing less products, but you will ultimately have more higher chance of success because you're not just throwing stick shit at the wall, hoping that something sticks. And, you know, a lot of people talk about test three products a day, bro, and all this kind of stuff until you find a winner. It's the fastest way to go broke. So ignore those kind of gurus. So talking through the criteria, first and foremost, you wanna sell something which is already selling. It's the easiest thing to do is to find something which is already selling. You don't want to reinvent the wheel. It makes zero sense trying to find a needle in a haystack and try and test something that you know no one else is selling. You always wanna sell into existing demand because it's harder to create demand you know, from a product which no one else has heard of. Next, you want to try to make sure that it either solves a problem or is unique enough that has a wow effect. If something solves a problem, it's very easy to show the transformation of going from a bad state to a desired state. And again, like stuff such as cleaning products or back related products, health related products, beauty products, kind of most of the time fall into this solves a problem. So I personally try to stick to problem solving products, but on the flip side, a winning product can still be something which is just wow, quirky, cool and unique. A lot of those products you will see on TikTok you know, a lot of these people like gimmick, gimmicky toys and stuff like that, that people sell that ultimately do go viral. But when it comes to scripting and stuff like that, I personally just, just prefer to sell problem solving products. The next step in the criteria is can it be sourced? So you may find a product online, but if you can't actually source it on, and we'll talk about where you can actually source products, but if you can't find it on places like AliExpress or actually get a supplier for it, then it makes no sense in you trying to you know, if it's already branded or it's patented, patented, then again, just eliminate it because there's thousands and thousands of products that are out there. The next one, and probably one of the most important parts of this criteria is that it has enough margin. Now in today's society, well, not so much society, in today's ecosystem, you need to make sure, especially if you're using paid ads, that at a minimum, you are three X in the cost of goods. So if you're getting it, for example, for $10, which is the product and the shipping cost, you need to make sure that you are selling it for a minimum of $30. And that's a, that's a bare minimum. Ideally, you want to be selling it for four to five X, especially if you're targeting the higher country, the, the higher, like where there's more competition, such as the top four, especially in the United States, because the costs and CPMs are a lot higher. And you wanna be selling a product ideally for over $30 so that you have enough margin to actually make money when you scale. And that's one of the biggest things that I see a lot of newbies miss out on, like their break even RAS will be like 2.0 or something. And it just, it's just incredibly, incredibly difficult to make money at scale because your costs are always gonna increase when you start to scale and you push more money push more money into the Facebook system or whatever advertising system that you're using. Now the final one is existing content online. Now, when you're testing out, again, I'm, I'm gonna talk about creating ads and all that kind of stuff a little later in the video, but you wanna make sure that there is at least some existing, some element of existing content online so that you can use that to at least test the concepts of the product. And you know, a lot of people are like, oh, you can't steal product, you can't steal content, nah, 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 nah. But there is no efficient way to do it without doing that. What are you gonna do? You know, order the product from Amazon, shoot your own content and, or send it out to an influencer just to test in it for fail, makes zero sense. So you always wanna make sure that there's some existing content. I'm going to talk about like where you should check for existing content a little later in the video when we get onto the marketing side of things. But just as a, a rule of thumb, these are the five things that I like to go into. And if you literally take anything away from this video, if you literally just take and apply this alone, you will make more money and, and stop losing a lot more money you will stop losing money essentially if you just apply this one thing here. Now scrolling down to the actual method. So now we've covered like what to go over. You wanna obviously now find the actual products. Where do you find these things? Well, there's free methods and there's paid methods. Both work equally as well. Now, some people have preference on some paid tools than others, but to be honest, you can still use this method. And this is the, my ultimate go-to method, which is Facebook Ads Library. And again, Facebook Ads Library, if you don't know what it is, it's basically where every single advert on 
Facebook that is currently running or active is on there. So all of your competitors' ads are on there. All of the biggest brands that are running ads in the world are all on there. Everything is all on there and you can filter on a few things. So what I personally like to filter on to nail down where what to, be, to, to know what I'm essentially looking for is these are the filters here. I'm not sure if you can see them, but I'll zoom in a little bit. You can see here we've got active ads. And if you click on this button here where it says filter, I like to filter on active ads, videos, and on impression date, what I like to do is go back a, a few like days. So usually like seven or 10 days, because if it's been running for seven or 10 days, then nine times out of 10, it's making some sort of money for that person. And what you're going to be looking for ultimately, well, before we look at that is you, you want to be, in terms of the keywords that you want to be putting in the search, you want to be searching for keywords that other dropshippers are using or other people are frequently using in their adverts. Things like sell and soon, free shipping, limited stock, sell and soon, a percentage off. So any discount number, get yours here, order now, neck pain for a specific, if you're looking for pain related products, you could put in neck pain or relieves pain or foot pain, whatever it may be, you can add those in. Now, if you scroll down, ultimately you, what you, what essentially what you're looking for once you put in these keywords is you're looking for brands like, 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 like these mini brands that ultimately have a lot of ads running because it's a very much of a good sign. You can see here Rise Superfoods, these are not a, a dropshipper, but they obviously do a, a lot of direct response ads and do a lot of creative testing, testing. So the more ads, the more active ads that they have, the good, the better, you know, that's a good sign because they're actively testing out different stuff, which is obviously something which is working for them. And another telltale sign is how long has it been running for? So if you look here, right, you can see here what I've circled, I probably should put another arrow there, but you can see here, it, Facebook will also tell you the time up when it actually started running. So this ad is active, we're in July at the moment in time, and it's been running since the 26th of November, which tells me, obviously this advert and this product is working for this person because there's no way that someone's gonna keep an ad running for X amount of months if it isn't bringing in some sort of sales and some sort of results. So there are the two telltale signs, especially with a free paid method, Facebook ads library that you can use. Now, moving on, you have the paid side of things. Now, there's two tools. There's, in fact, to be honest, there is so many tools out there that you could use, but like a lot of them are a waste of time. A lot of them don't actually work or they're trash and they just show repeated products. But these are the ones that, and this changes over time, but these are the two that I use. I probably use Winning Hunter a little bit more than Manea. But I use them pretty much for different reasons, which we'll show a little later in the video as well. So Winning Hunter is one that also, if you are targeting the EU, it shows you ad spend, which is another great leading metric on how much a person has actually spent on an ad creative. And the more that they've spent on an ad creative, then the good, right? Well, at least you would assume so. And then Monero is another one that I like to use because it has, you can see here, I've looked at this, this brand here and I can see all of their creatives uh, which ones have got the best, which ones have got the best likes, the engagement and stuff like that, so that I know that I can take something like this model to script and reverse engineer it from there. So these two that I like to use, another one is called foreplay and not the type of foreplay that you're probably wonder, wondering about or thinking about, you dirty minded animals. But yeah, this is another good, good one. It's like Facebook ads library, but loads of people save the videos. You can also filter based on, you know, how long an advert has been running, which is also a, another a fantastic telltale sign that you can use. And then there is the creative inspo that you can use to find creatives that you like the look of and send them on, either replicate them yourself or send them on to your, your, your video editor to recreate something similar. Now, another great tool, another great pay tool that I like to use is one called Shop Hunter. Now, there are some other ones out there as well, but Shop Hunter is kind of like my go-to. It helps you track store sales. So you can put in a URL of a store, like this one here, for example. You can pull up on estimates of how much they're doing on a daily, weekly, and monthly basis, and you can find their best winning products. It shows you the theme that they're using and apps and a few other things. Now, is it completely accurate? Probably not, it's probably off a few thousand, but at least it gives you an idea of whether or not a the store is actually making some money, which is obviously gonna be a good sign. So I like to use this again, it's just, all of this, all of these paid tools are just data points that you are taking to make an informed decision on whether or not you should test out a product. 
Now, the final one is one that I recently added into my arsenal, which is one called Tickstar. And if you, unless you've been under a rock, you probably know that TikTok shop at the moment in time is absolutely blowing up with affiliates. And one little bit of alpha that you can use and take away from this video is taking TikTok shop winners and running Facebook ads to them. And not a lot of people are doing it at the moment in time. So that is some alpha that you can use and you can sort by creator, video, shop, product, hashtag, and a few other things in different categories. There's another recent one that I've been using, especially for the video side of things, because it shows all of the videos which people have made for a specific product. So that ultimately gives you a ton of content to use for your ads, okay? Now, the next part in the system is ultimately the product page because you're going to need to drive traffic to a product page. You know, people are going to see your ad, they're going to land on a product page and they're either going to, you know, abandon and dip off and do whatever it is and continue on with their daily life or they're going to click this add to cart button. And your main goal as a marketer is to do whatever it is in your power to get them to click this add to cart button. Now there's obviously above the fold and there's below the fold. This is obviously desktop. And what I would say as a little tip is you always want to optimize for mobile first because 80 to 90% of your traffic will come from mobile. So always make sure that it looks good on mobile before you start wondering about what it actually looks like on desktop. So that's one thing that I would always recommend. And above the fold is basically everything that someone sees before they have to scroll down. Okay, so everything up to this section is above the fold and then we've got some stuff below the fold down here. Now the hero section is this part here and what we've got here is the social proof. So this is, I'll, I'll zoom in a little bit more. So to break this down, the product page should consist of these elements. How you have them, it's up to you, but this is the best layout that I've seen or I've seen variations of these across different brands. So first and foremost, social proof, which is usually just a testimonial from the customer. And then you have some reviews, which is the stars. And then you have benefit bullet points. And then from there, you have the bundles as well to increase your average order value to get people to buy more. We've got your add to cart button. And if you scroll down, you also have additional benefits here as some drop downs. Because you've got to remember that most people won't scroll any further than this. So another thing and another little bit of alpha tip that I would recommend to you guys is your high quality images with benefits. So if you scroll through these, which you obviously can't, but the images want to sell. You want to sell in the images because remember, most people are not going to go all the way down and read all of your copy, but they will scroll through your pictures. And the benefits that you have here, the main overarching big idea that you have that your product that your product solves, you want to make sure that you put that inside of these images, whether that be before and afters, you know, benefits, testimonials, easy to install, how to use it, and all those kind of things in your images, because most people will go through those and won't scroll any further down. Now, if we continue to scroll down, we have below the fold. Now, below the fold, we like to have three to four benefit sections. I've only just put one here, but I'm just doing this for demonstration purposes. And you want to make sure that your titles are ultimately like benefit driven. You always want to make sure that your titles are benefit driven because, again, people will only read these titles and very rarely read this copy. Copy is extremely important, by the way, so I wouldn't skimp on the copy, but you always want to make sure that your titles are your main goal of this title is to get people to lure them into reading this copy here and vice and, and you know, so on and so on. If you keep scrolling down, you want to make sure that you have testimonials, primarily with images, because it's always people, again, people are visual people. So you want to make sure that these are images. And again, you want to have some, what I like to call power testimonials on your page. Then if you keep scrolling down, a comparison chart is always good to include, showing you why you are better than other products, because you got to remember when you are selling some sort of product, most people have tried different things. You know, that, that like if you've got for back pain, for example, a lot of people have probably tried different products and you want to be able to show them that you are superior or what you're selling is superior because you, for whatever reasons it is, which you can detail here. One main copywriting key is that if you can convince the person that the only way they can solve their problem is through purchasing your product, nine times out of 10, they will buy. So if we keep scrolling down, we have the guarantee to remove any friction that people may have. So a 30 day money back guarantee, some people have 60 and 90. I personally just think that a 30 day works fine across the board. And then finally some FAQs, because people are going to have frequently asked questions and 
you know, rather than them going elsewhere, if you can answer what these are on the actual page, then it doesn't give them a reason to go elsewhere. And if you keep scrolling down, I always like to include a second call to action because again, most people can, you can have a sticky add to cart, which we also do like to have. But if you have a second call to action, which just mimics the top part, it just makes things a lot more easier to for the person to click add to cart, right? It's like the second here, we've give you all of the benefits here, go ahead and purchase. Now, again, final to wrap that part up is revenue is, is, is reviews, sorry. And you can use multiple different apps for this. Vitals, the one that I mentioned before, has this built in, so you can use Vitals for that. And that's pretty much it for the product page. And this product page layout works extremely well. Like the industry standard is around about, I believe it's around about 2%, but we implement this. And again, it comes down to your offer and, and what you're selling in and stuff like that. But we typically see around about a three to 4%, sometimes 5% on some products across the board on these in, in multiple different countries as well in different niches utilizing this layout. So it's definitely worth testing if you don't have something which looks like this. Now to move on to the other side of things, we're gonna go a little bit deeper into the upsell and downsell side of things. So, and the reason why we do upsells and downsells is because it lets us increase our average order value. And the reason why we want to increase our average order value is so that we can basically afford to profitably scale more on Facebook. It gives us more room to play with, with our paid ads. The whole goal of increase your average order value is to try and squeeze as much money as possible out of every single customer who purchase from you. Now there's pre-purchase upsells and there's post-purchase upsells. Post-purchase is the one that I personally like to use and I'll explain like the entire process and the whole strategy. A post-purchase upsell is basically shows once someone has already gave us some money. Now, this works extremely effective because first and foremost, they've already committed to giving us some money. All we gotta do is just throw in a related upsell and you know we make extra money. And most of it's, it, there's more profit inside of this because we've already acquired the customer. They've already gave, gave us some money. So first and foremost, I'm gonna talk you through the strategy. Customer places an order. What happens? Then upsell one pops up. I'll talk about what app that you can use for this. The app that I personally like to use is Aftersell. There's Aftersell and OCU, one click upsell. These are the main two ones. And this strategy will work across any of them, to be fair. So a customer places the order and there's upsell one, you know, and what they then see is the customer has then unlocked a special offer. And I personally like to offer, to be honest, the same product with 40% off. Now, this very much can depend on what sort of product that you are selling. But for the nine times out of 10, what's worked based on countless of split tests is basically just offering them the exact same product that they just purchased, but for a different, for, but for a discounted price. And typically 40% works extremely well. Now, at this point, they can either say yes or no. If they say no, then they are gonna go to a downsell. And this downsell is typically usually just another sale at what you just showed them. So the exact same product, but this time it's for 50% off and you kind of frame it as like a last chance or last warning. If they say yes, then they go to upsell two. And upsell two is going to be a complimentary product. And I typically like to give 50% off for this one as well. And if they say no or yes to this downsell over here, then they go directly to the checkout. And again, if they purchase this, they go directly to the, the thank you page, sorry. And what you can do and what you can offer is a upsell, thank you page upsell. Now, I think this is this is optional and I think Shopify at the moment in time are potentially changing this because they changed the checkout, something to do with scripts. So sometimes this may not be available depending on the age of your Shopify store. It may be that you can do this with these apps and or maybe that you can't, but you know, if you can, then obviously you can offer a, an optional thank you page upsell as well, right? Now, if we continue to move on, the main important part is obviously now is the marketing side of things. You know, we've got our product page, we've got everything, we're increasing our average order value. How are we actually getting traffic to our store? Camera battery died, we are back. So, as I was previously saying, marketing is one of the most important parts of the process. And it's a part where a lot of people actually mess up and, and just can't seem to make it work. Now I'm gonna talk about the platform that I like to use, how to use it, how to test, how to scale. 
Now, there's many different platforms out there. Traffic is the lifeblood of any online store. Without it, you won't make any sales and everything else is pretty much redundant. The platform that I personally like to use is Facebook ads or Meta ads, whatever you want to call them. And just on a quick note, obviously, you know, the glow up of Mark Zuckerberg has been mad. You know, you need to, you need someone, this needs to be studied because this guy went from stealing data to stealing girls. I mean, I look at him, he's looking, rocking Balmain or Balmain, depending on how you want to say it. So, you know, yeah, I just like the platform. It works very, very well. Now, the platform itself is driven by creatives. In fact, I'll go as far as saying any advertising platform is now driven by creatives because the algorithm does a lot of the heavy lifting and showing it to people who are more likely to take the action, the desired action that it is that you are trying to achieve. So that's why content is very, very important. It's one of the key criteria, if you would have remembered earlier in the video about the product selection. The more content that there is that you have to work with, the better and easier it is your job is to create ads. Now, in order to find content, I personally like to use TikTok. It's the kind of like the go-to place because it looks native. And you just do a simple search of the name of the product that you're selling or variations of it. Another place is obviously YouTube that you can check out, but another, another competitors, but nine times out of 10, TikTok will have a lot of content. Now, in order to download the content, Without the watermark, you can use a tool called Snaptic. Again, 100% free. You put in the URL of the video itself, click download, and presto, you will have the link. You will have the video downloaded in MP4 format so that you can use in your editing software. If we keep scrolling down, the most important part is scripting. And this is why copywriting is such a massive key in the entire part. It, like it's in it's a a very important skill to have when you're dropshipping because transcends into so many different parts of the business, especially the advert side of things, because you're going to need to script video ads. You know, the days of ripping one for one videos can still work, but if you want to take it to the next level and you want to kind of like scale further, you will need to learn how to put together ads by yourself. Now, in order to do that, the process that we go through is using two tools. You would have remembered Menea from the product research side of things and also Foreplay. So these two are very good to use. So what I would do is you can find winning ads, okay? Winning ads to me are ones with a lot of engagement, likes, comments, shares, and those kind of things, because it shows that they've been running for a significant period of time. And on Foreplay, you can also search for ones that have been running for a long period of time. And the goal is to find winning viral scripts and angles that you can use. Then what I like to do is you can download the video using whatever tool that you want to use and then transcribe it for free using riverside.fm riverside or is it riversideamfm.com or whatever it is. You can just type in Riverside and you'll find it. And then what you're going to do is you're going to rewrite the ad, right? You had a winning script here, template, templated. You can just work your product, change the captions around a little bit and fit your product into this winning script. That's basically how you do it. Again, you're not trying to reinvent the wheel here and you can get very far just doing what I'm about to show you. Now, in terms of creating the actual ad itself, personally I like to use AI voiceovers and 11 Labs is the best at doing that. So it is free up to a certain period. Of, and then if you generate loads of characters, you will need to pay. But for the most part, you can generate quite a lot of stuff for free and also in different languages as well. So if you are targeting an EU country, German, France, Swedish, Denmark, Danish, same thing, you know, you can put scripts in there in that language and it will come out sounding like it'll have that kind of like twang and accent to it, which is pretty cool. In terms of actually creating the ad itself, now you can hire a video editor. I personally don't recommend you do it until you're at scale or till you are at a point whereby you can't do it yourself time wise. But CapCut is the best out there. I mean, there is Premiere Pro, there's a few of the tools that are out there, but CapCut it's almost illegal that CapCut is free, at least what I think from my experience. There's so many different, they make it so easy for you to put together video ads that, you know, you'd be a dummy not to use it, especially if you are a beginner. So CapCut is gonna to wanna to be the one that you're going to use. In terms of testing, now I'm probably going to do a an entire video on Facebook ads and testing and all that kind of stuff. If you do want that, then let me know in the comments down below. And I'll put together a full video just based on, you know, testing, scaling and all and creative testing and all that kind of stuff. But I'm just going to kind of like go over it in the more, more most raw and simplistic, ter simplistic format. 
So there's two kind of test instructions. It will depend on which country we are targeting on and which where the store is based, on which structure on one on which structure we will use to test out a product. But you have the ABO, which is all these ad sets. Some of these are broad. Some of these are interesting. Inside of them, we have you know three to four different like creatives in there. And in these creatives, most of the part they are exactly the same body of the video, but the only difference is the creatives itself. So the, I mean, not the creative, the first three seconds, which is the hook, the variation of the hook. And you usually have three to six to eight of these. Okay. Now the other structure is just one large broad CBO here, three to four different ads. Again, same thing, variation of the visual of the first three seconds. And that's a broad CBO, just broad, like the demographic, 25 to 65 year olds, completely open. Now in terms of scaling, what's working at the moment in time, again, this always changes. If you have a look at some of my older videos, you'll see that the strategy that I've been using previously are no longer the strategy that I use now. And I'm not no maxi at all. You have these dorks on Twitter always arguing which strategy is the best. Can you use cost caps? Is it ABO? Is it CBO? No, you're wrong. You're not doing it correctly and all this BS. I generally don't give a shit. You know, if it puts money in my bank, I'll use anything. But what's working for me and in our businesses right now is cost cap, ABOs, okay, ad set with the best ad sets, more obviously multiple with the best creatives, and cost cap advantage shopping campaigns, one broad ad set with, you know, a cost cap set on that, along with the best creatives in there as well. And again, if you want me to do a video just purely focused on Facebook ads, let me know and I will drop that. I'll bring one of those out. Now, Final part is the back end side of things. Now it's all well and good scaling, of course, but if your back end is absolutely trash, then you're just it's just like a house of cards. It's eventually going to collapse on yourself. So you need to have a solid, you know, fulfillment and back end in order to sustain the scale and at least grow and move forward. The first part is ultimately the fulfillment side of things. So there's two things. There's the beginner, which is your testing, and then there's the advanced, which is obviously scaling further. So to test, you can use AliExpress and DSs. Now I see a lot of people, especially gurus here on here saying, don't use AliExpress. You can't use it. Shipping days are 30 days and then, 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 and all this crap. But to be honest, they only really do that so that they can push, you know, some sort of other platform whereby they get commission from. I'm just being straight up with you. That's most of the time what they do. But you can still test from AliExpress. You just want to connect DSs, which is going to be the fulfillment. And if you have a look, right, Shipping, if you, it depends on the country that you're shipping to, of course, and the product that you're selling, but most things will arrive using AliExpress shipping fairly quickly. You can see here to United Kingdom, we've got seven day here, and to Germany, we've got eight day here, ship, free shipping. And shipping will only get faster and cheaper from China. It's just the way the world is going. If you look at big brands like Sheen and Timu that ship from China, like people don't really mind waiting 14 days max, you know? and Personal experience, if I've shipped some stuff from, if I buy some stuff from United States or from a United States brand, nine times in 10 for it to get to me in the UK, it will take about two weeks. So providing that your product is good quality, then it's totally fine, trust me. Now, of course, you can't scale with AliExpress. You're gonna scale with a private agent and private agents are going to give you faster shipping, better prices and more reliability. Now, instead of DSs, you're gonna use an app called Diane Xiaomi. And or, or sometimes the private agent will have their own custom ERP. Uh, but Diane Exam is the one that I personally use across our stores. And you can see here we're getting around about eight days delivery to Germany and we're getting around six days delivery to United Kingdom. Uh, and that's using shipping lines like Yan Wen and 4PX. And usually, again, it's maximum around about 14 days of what we're seeing to the main countries. In terms of uh, another thing I just want to touch on is like where to actually get a fulfillment agent from. Well, it's best to go off recommendation, of course. A lot of these now are hopping on social media like Twitter and inside of Discord groups, but it's always best to go off recommendations just so that you have that kind of stamp of, stamp of approval, approval and you know, you're not getting burnt. The next part is ultimately hiring. Now, at first, you can also, you, it's fine to be a one-man band. I was a one-man band for a many, for quite a while, for at least for my first year. And, you know, it was difficult. It gets to the point whereby you can't handle, you can't do the customer service yourself. You can't do the emails and stuff like that because 
you then can't dedicate your time to the money making tasks such as doing new creatives creating new scripts finding new products launching products building out product pages and all this kind of stuff so you will at some point need to outsource the mundane jobs like answering and replying to emails the two places where you want to do that is onlinejobs.ph and upwork upwork is a little bit more expensive in terms of the people who you who apply on there and there's more fees involved to be honest for both you and the worker but the quality is a little bit higher online jobs the quality is in terms of like you have to very very much filter for gold on online jobs you'll get a lot of applicants and there are some absolute killers on here i found some some very solid people on onlinejobs.ph but it takes some time to go through the process and actually find them and filter them through to get them on board now the process itself my process looks like this again most people will have different processes but this is just one that's worked for me you have the job advert that you put out you will shortlist people based on their previous work you always want to ask for some sort of previous work or examples that you can go from and then you prelim and what i mean by prelim is basically just reaching out to them once they're on a shortlist so you shortlist maybe 10 people you reach out to all of them and just ask them a few questions like how many hours are they currently working at the moment in time do they have existing clients what's their internet like and from there you will ultimately maybe get rid of a few people in that shortlist from there then you will have a trial task like i like to set people a trial task and say you know this is what i want you to do and you should pay them for this part you know it, 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 i very much value people's time so depending on the task, I like to give people a task to do and nine times out of 10, I'll, I will pay them for that as well. You can interview them after if you really want to and then hire them and again on just like a probation period. If they're good, great, get them full time. If not, then sack them off and go back to someone in your shortlist. Now, team wise, this is what the current team looks like. So you have the CEO. You have supplier, which is you, you must have that to scale. And then you have customer service reps, which you have those from different stores. They, depending on how much volume you're doing, you may need to have different sets of customer reps so that you have two on one store, two on another store. Uh, to start out with, you're running multiple stores. You may just have one person who handles all emails across all of the stores. And then I personally have a video editor at the moment in time to do the creatives because I just focus on the main money making skills and the main money making skills for me is media buying first and foremost so actually doing ads so scaling testing and stuff like that that i mean i keep it lean so i still do the copywriting because i'm i'm fairly good at copywriting so i haven't hired a copywriter you can also and i don't recommend anything some people will say that you can you can hire a, a product uploader or a product finder Realistically, I've done those in the past and they were a massive waste of time because they first and foremost can't find products and it's only going to work if you are doing the volume game, which is, you know, spam testing a bunch of shit products, you know, three to five a day, hoping to find that gold. That's not the approach that I personally take and that we personally take. We would rather do quality over quantity and test less products. So I still do the product research self and do the copywriting. OK, so that is pretty much it. And, you know, going forward in terms of the next steps, like I mentioned earlier in the video, if you want the free course, we've got a free course. You can check it out. The link for it will be down below. You pretty much uh, you've got 40 to 50, I think, videos inside of it. You can go through and check that out. If you are someone who wants more one on one help from myself and my brother, the Econ Wizard, then feel free to book a call. Again, the link for that will be down below as well. So you can test that out. But so you can click that and uh, book a time for us to hop on and chat and see where you're at. See if you're a good fit for the program, the mentorship one on one. And yeah, there's two options that you have there to move forward in terms of next steps. But what I've basically given you here is everything. And it's a high level overview. And if you want me to do a specific video on any of these things, then please do let me know in the comments. It would be very helpful for me. I'm trying to jump back on YouTube and be more consistent with the content. So if you enjoyed it and you got some value from it, let me know in the comments. It would be much appreciated. Make sure you subscribe if you like money. That's what it actually says on the back of this thing here. Subscribe if you like money. And I'll see you in the next video. Take care.